Oh. A bunny rabbit? Go talk to him. All right. Hello, Rodef, and welcome to Bior Chameitz. Um, we're el- el- you want to say hi to everybody? Hi. <laughs> and so we have special guests, Jacob and Julia, from six feet away. From six feet away um, who will be all burning our chametz together because of um, requests from Colorado um, Department of Public Health and Environment. We're going to be um, not doing a very big fire, so we're only doing the ten pieces that um, we each um, that we each searched for last night in Medikat chametz. Um, and so, what I thought we would do is we would. Um, we would um, first we would burn it and then um, share a couple of thoughts about chametz um, and matzah. Um, first, uh, this is kind of like a holy campfire, um, and so I thought it would be good to start with a story because what else do you do around the campfire except for stories? What? You can say hi. Hi. Thank you for saying hi. I'm going to tell a story. Okay. There was once a man who lived in Minnesota. Okay, and he worked in a factory, and every single morning, his wife would make him lunch and put it in a brown paper bag, Um, not unlike this one. And she would leave it on the kitchen table, and he would get up, and right on time, the same exact time every day, he would pick up his lunch bag, and he would go to work. Now, when Pesach came, um, and they did their search for chametz the night before um, the night before Pesach, and um, they had they collected their chametz in a brown paper bag, not unlike this one. I bet you you can see where this story is going. And um, in the morning, um, Moishala he got up just at the same time he did as every day, and he picked up the brown paper bag on the kitchen table, and he went on his way to work. And when he got to work, he looked at his bag and like, oh, I wonder, um, I wonder what my wife made for me for lunch today. And he looks in and all there is is crumbs. And he's like, ah, oh, crumbs. So he throws it into the dumpster on his way into work and he's very upset. Um, his wife, who was in charge of burning the chametz while he was at work, um, she comes into the kitchen and it's only an hour before they have to burn the chametz. And she opens up the bag and it's Moishala's lunch. And she goes, oh, no, what are we going to do? We have to burn our chametz. And she calls Moishala and she says, Moishala, what did you do with the bag? And he's like, oh, it was full of crumbs, so I threw it into the dumpster. And so she said, no, but that was our chametz. We need to burn it quickly. We only have an hour to go. And so Moishala had a, ran out of work. He ran back to the dumpster. He climbed into the dumpster. And he, and he luckily, it wasn't very full. So he finds his, um, his chametz bag. And now he has a problem. He can't get out of the dumpster by himself. And so he doesn't know to. He's stuck in the dumpster. He has his chametz. They need to burn it. They only have 45 minutes left to go. And so he just starts screaming, help, help, help. And uh, his uh, and one of his coworkers, who wasn't Jewish, um, so hears him crying, grabs a ladder, gets him out of the dumpster. And he says, what were you doing in the dumpster? And Michelle's like, oh, I don't know what to tell him. I, I, I missed my lunch in here. So he's okay, kind of crazy guy. And so then he's able to get his chametz, brings it back home, and they burn their chametz together just in the nick of time. So I hope uh, your process of gathering chametz last night and this morning was a little less advent- eventful than that. Um, but uh, so we are going to um, get ready to burn. Just so you know that we have until 11.56 to burn our chametz. Um, burn and or sell our chametz. Um, we have until 11.56, so I figured that would give us plenty of time. And so I have my bag of chametz right here, which I'm going to put into our fire pit. Looks like Jacob and Julie already put in theirs. Um, Jacob, would you like to um, give any thoughts about Chametz and burning chametz while I go get the uh, the lighter that I left inside. 
What is this? Matthew. What? Matthew. Oh, is that gonna? Yeah. Uh, What's this? Talking about burning thumbnails. What's this? Yes, this is gonna help burn the thumbnails. I'm gonna um, help you. Yeah. Okay, you wanna come here? I'm pretty I'm sure this is from daddy. the Mario Bros. Right? Um, so there's a. Daddy, when you're please let them help you, please. You, when you're searching for thumbnails, you have to check your pockets of all your coats and stuff to make sure there's no crumbs in there. And um, what the Magnum Ezra said about that is that you also have to search through your metaphorical pockets. You have to make sure that like all of the things that you acquired this year, you got through the right means and um, you didn't damage any relationships in order to get yourself ahead. Um, and what I've been finding really meaningful in this time of social distancing is, probably not loud enough, I don't know. What I've been finding really meaningful in this time of social distancing is trying to repair relationships that may have been damaged over the past year. Um, this is a lot of time with my thoughts, but it's good to make a little repair. Uh, Scott. All right. So, Yona's going to help me. Um, and so, just a couple of thoughts. Is I have my lulav here from um, Sukkot, because there's an idea. Wait, Yona, we're going to... I'm going to say one more thing and then we're going to burn, okay? Can you hold the love? Can you hold the lulav? Okay, you hold the love. Show everybody the lulav in the video. So, um, and so there's an idea that if we use something for a mitzvah, that we don't just throw it away. And so there's a tradition to save your lulav from Sukkot and use it as kindling when you burn your chametz. Because we're trying to minimize the fire, we're not going to actually use it to burn the chametz this year, but I do have it. We also have the spoon and the feather from our search last night, which again, we're not gonna add to the fire. I'll just compost it later. Um, but again, usually we would be putting this in too. So here we go. So we're gonna, Wait, Yona? so Yona, stand back. Come back with Mama. Thank you. No, no, not in right. front of the video. Come, come over the other side. Go, go to Mama. Come sit in the back. Thank you. Okay. I didn't it open my door. Okay. Right. So we're getting the fire going. But not too much smoke, don't worry. Um, and so while it's burning, um, I had a thought um, about kind of chametz and matzah. Um, and I kind of like to think of your chametz, of burning our chametz. Kind of like our um, our Tashlich halfway through the year. So we had Tashlich around Rosh Hashanah, um, where we kind of threw away our sins and we thought about how we're going to be better um, next year. And so now we're about half a year later. Um, we're half a year until um, until next Rosh Hashanah. Um, and so this is um, this is kind of another opportunity to think about how we can better ourselves and and kind of the uh, um, and think about the uh, the qualities um, of uh, and aspects of our lives that we want to improve. Um, and so one idea is chametz. What's the difference between chametz and matzah? Because it is, matzah is also just bread, really. Um, but it's bread that hasn't risen. And so chametz, the main characteristic of chametz, of bread, is that it's risen, right? It's kind of puffed up. It's kind of prideful. Um, it's puffed up and arrogant and feels very, you know, kind of self-important. Um, and so that's one of the reasons why we have to cover our challah when we make Kiddush on Shabbat um, is because um, it would get offended if it, was, if it saw that it, something else was being blessed before because it's a little arrogant. Um, and so matzah is really much more modest. Matzah has that quality of humility. Um, and so as we're burning our chametz, what I'm thinking about is really burning up that pride, um, burning up that arrogance, um, and, um, making a, and kind of making a clean start for the year. Just uh, kind of making, getting the fire going a little bit more. Can I add to that, Jack? Yes, please, Jacob. So the only difference between the words chametz and matzah, come close. If you spell them, matzah is mem tzadi he, and chametz is chet mem tzadi. So they both have mem tzadi there. The only difference is a chet and a he. And the only difference, if you look at a he, it's basically a chet, but it has a little opening in it. So the difference between matzah and chametz is matzah, it leaves a little bit of the wall open and chametz, it's closed off. And I think it's a similar thing to what Jeff said. You know, if you're like puffed up, 
um, and you have an inflated sense of self-importance, can't let anybody in. And so hopefully this year with our matzah, we'll break just a little opening. Go ahead. Add a little bit to the fire. Thank you, Brad. Um, and so another great thing to do around um, campfires or around holy campfires um, is to sing songs. And so especially around holy campfires, um, we should sing kind of a holy niggin. And so one that I thought of again is on the theme of um, of kind of trying to better ourselves and looking into our hearts, um, kind of looking into our hearts and and figuring out what um, uh, how we can improve ourselves. Um, there's a great niggin by uh, Joey Weisenberg. Um, um, called Lev's Niggin, and um, he wrote it because his son is named Lev, just like ours, um, and is kind of a lullaby for his son. Um, but I like to think of it as the Niggin of the heart, um, as a song, a melody of the heart. Um, and so, um, so I figured we would um, sing it while the chametz, um burns down finally. <laughs> I <laughs> I <laughs> 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 